Greetings YouTube. It is Thursday, January 9th, 2019, 2.32 p.m. I am uh, coming to you today to share an unboxing video of the Retro 51 Space Race Collection. Um, 2019 is the 50th anniversary of the walk on the moon in 1969, and um, so Retro 51 wanted to do a commemorative space race collection. This is very limited edition. Um, it actually came out for pre-orders, I guess, in late November, early December, and within hours, um, all the pre-orders were taken. I got this from Pen Boutique, but I know um, Goulet Pens out of Ashland, Virginia was also selling them, and when they first came out, they were gone in a matter of hours. Um, so I got put on the notify list at a couple of places. Boutique is just the one where I got the notification first. Um, you can still buy these pins individually, um, but I really kind of wanted the commemorative set because I'm collecting the Americana type Retro 51s. My husband is very big into history and the space race, and he wanted the Apollo pin anyway, so I thought I'll use Christmas money, and if I can get my hands on the complete collection, you know, I'll spend my Christmas money on these pins. Um, so my in-laws gave me the set. Um, as you can see, the box is really very cool. On the back, it's got like schematics of the rockets, and it says that's one small step for a man, one giant leap for mankind. You know, Neil Armstrong. Um, I did just see First Man last year, and that movie was very, very good. I didn't realize Neil Armstrong had a daughter who died at the age of like four or five of cancer and whatnot really sad movie and girl who is in the movie uh, the girl who kicked the hornet's nest or whatever she played Neil Armstrong's wife and she did a very good job so you get this really really cool box and inside are the three pins now these pins are for the Mercury program the Gemini program and the Apollo program and of course Mercury you had to have Mercury because Mercury proved you could launch people into space and not get them killed and they could circle the earth and come back. And of course Apollo put the men on the moon. But I kind of feel bad for the Gemini program because they don't re it, nobody really remembers Gemini. We remember, you know, shooting astronauts up into space. We remember, you know, they orbited the earth, they came back, they proved it could be done safely and then Apollo put the men on the moon. But Gemini was the bridge because um, you had to prove that you could do more in space than just circle the Earth. Um, you know, you had to prove that you could get out in space and do a spacewalk before you could land on the moon and do the spacewalk. So, um, I believe if I remember correctly, Ed White was the first man to walk in space with the Gemini program, and sadly he was also killed in the Apollo 1 fire with uh, Chappie and Grissom. Um, but Gemini, I think, kind of gets a little bit left out of the historical mix. So that's why that one, why that pen will have a soft spot in my heart. So we have Mercury. We have Apollo, which is the pen Bill wants. And then we have the one that I feel has kinship with, Gemini. And I really like this pen. This is the coolest looking of the three pins, I think. So let's open these, shall we? I think the packaging material is really cool. It's got the same kind of schematic that's on the back. You know, Space Race Lunar Module, United States. You know, I don't know. I can't even imagine. Even during the years of the space shuttle going into space, I don't even like turbulence on an airplane. Can you imagine what it would feel like to strap your ass to a Saturn V rocket? I don't think so. I really, really don't think so. So let's start with Mercury, since that was the beginning of the space program. But, yeah, I mean, I don't deal good when a plane shakes, you know, at 30,000 feet. I can't imagine launching myself 250,000 or however. Is space technically 250,000 miles above the Earth? I can't remember what the actual measurement is, but it's something like that. And then turbulence in a, on a rocket is a completely different thing altogether. If you don't have turbulence, you're probably not doing it right now. This one is very, very cool. 
I love the finish on this one. And Retro 51 always makes a beautiful pin anyway. But they really, in my opinion, knocked it out of the park for the 50th anniversary of the moon landing. So here's the Mercury. Or more correctly, I suppose it should be held like that to actually look like a rocket. Um, trying to see. This was a limited edition. I'm trying to see if I... I have uh, 1147 out of 1958. Now 1958 was, you know, when NASA started in this form and they started doing the um, doing the rocket research. Um, a lot of the guys who were brought over here from Operation Paperclip in World War II, the Nazi rocket scientists who were brought over to help us build the bomb to stop Hitler, they transitioned into aerospace technology. Werner von Braun was the first head of NASA. Of course, if you believe the conspiracy theories, he was either an alien or talked to aliens because how could we go from this to the moon in less than 10 years and all that stuff. I'm not saying I do, but I love to watch ancient aliens for reasons, you know, to laugh at it. But anyway, so this is the Mercury rocket, which proved that we could get into space and orbit the Earth. So I'm going to put these back in the case because I want my husband to see the packaging when he gets home. Retro 51 always does such an amazing job with their packaging. And this one is, so it says on here, the Mercury mission was to orbit... Oh, I can't read this. The print's too small and it's too dark in here. Uh, to orbit manned spacecraft around Earth, to investigate the ability to function in space, to recover both man and spacecraft safely. So this was to prove we could actually get there. We didn't even know if we could get there when we did that. So then next was Gemini. Oh, that's Apollo. That's going to be the moon landing. So Gemini was the middle ground, and Gemini's mission was to test an astronaut's ability to fly long duration missions up to two weeks in space, to understand how spacecraft could rendezvous and dock in orbit around the Earth and the Moon, because yeah, they were going to have to do that, and then to perfect re-entry and landing methods and to further understand the efforts of longer space flights, no, to further understand the effects of long-term space flights on humans. So without Gemini, you could have been, couldn't have had Apollo, and that's why I think it's kind of sad that Gemini gets lost in the mix, because, yeah, we knew we could get there, but what was it going to do? You know, I mean, we still, in the 90s, had astronauts testing long-term effects of space exposure on your health because we send astronauts up to the ISS and they live there three six months at a time, you know, so you had to know, okay, well, we can get there, but what can we do when we get there, and are we going to be okay when we get there? So that was the point of Gemini, and that was kind of, that's kind of why I like the Gemini program the best. And I have to admit this pen is the coolest looking of the three, too, so it doesn't hurt that the Gemini pen is pretty cool. Like I said, Ed White did the first uh, walk in space, and then sadly he died in the Apollo 1 fire. So this one is pretty freaking sleek. This is, I guess they're all the same number from the set. Yeah, so it's 11 whatever it was I said for the other one. I love how sleek this pen looks. I love the metallic look of that. And doesn't it just look like a rocket? I mean, that's what the Gemini rockets look like if you turn it upside down. That's, and of course it says United States and has the flag and all the little details that the Gemini rocket had. So this one, this pen is my favorite. So that's the one I'm going to be claiming for, well I'll claim the Mercury one too because Bill said he only really wanted the Apollo one. And you can still buy these pens separately if like Bill you just wanted one of them. Um, but I'm not sure that you can actually find the, um, the sets anymore because it was an extremely limited edition set, uh, set. And like I said, it was to commemorate the start of the space race, which technically started in 1958, but in 19, 
69. Uh, 1969 and landed on the moon. So this is the 50th anniversary edition for the moon landings. All right. So then, of course, by Apollo, uh, Project Apollo's goal went beyond landing Americans on the moon and returning them safely to Earth. They included establishing the technology to meet other national interests in space, achieving prominence in space for the United States and carrying on a program of scientific exploration of the moon and developing the capability to work well, let's say, developing the ability to work in well, I'm sure developing the ability to work in space, which we did, eventually did when we created the space shuttles and the ISS. Now this one is gorgeous too. Bill's going to love this one. He doesn't really use pens a lot, but I have given him really nice rollerballs. He doesn't use fountain pens like I do, but he's got a little mini uh, rollerball collection that will include this one. Isn't that gorgeous? Let me hold it up a little so you can see it. Isn't that just beautiful? I mean, they're all three gorgeous, but I love the, the rose gold on this one. So this one will be his. Maybe I should hold it like that so you can actually see it. Um, of course, these use um, uh, typical rollerball gel refills. You don't have to buy the Retro 51 refills for these. Um, this is really beautiful. Yeah, it's 1147 out of 1958. So I feel like this is a great. I feel like this is a great addition to my collection. Um, if you've watched my other Retro 51. Um, collection video which was a while ago now um, I really like to collect the Americana ones and of course when I found out the space race was coming out um, that was it I knew I had to have it I'm probably very much a shiny magpie type um, with all of these but um, I knew that I wanted this series and like I said I tried to get it I tried to get even on pre-order and I couldn't because within you know, hours of them even announcing that these were going to be a thing. All the pre-orders were taken for this, the box set. And I was just like, well, rats, okay, notify me. But I went on notify list in several different places, which probably wasn't exactly fair now that I think about it. But I wanted to ensure that I would get on the list. So um, after Christmas, we got back, and I had seen on, I believe it was the Goulet Pins one, that they were in the process of stocking, getting limited supplies of these pens, of, of the boxed set, but I was like, okay, well, we'll see. Um, but then I saw on Instagram, Pin Boutique, I follow Pin Boutique, and that they had a, um, they had gotten their restock in, um, and of course it was saying, hurry, because these are limited edition. So um, I went, and the first time I went, they were out of stock. But then I went back the next day and I was able to get it. Um, you know, it's probably it's probably Retro 51 way of cashing in on FOMO and whatnot. Um, which may or may not be, I mean, maybe it's marketing employee to sell more pens. But I really feel like Retro 51 knows what their customers want. Like, for instance, I gave Bill a Retro 51 for Christmas. It was the Engine 31, which was their first responder pen. Um, and actually, it was funny because I didn't get into Retro 51s. I bought one back in 2014, which was the pigskin, which was the football one. And I never bought another Retro 51 after that. And then last year, last May, I went to Milwaukee with Bill when he went to um, a work-related work convention. And I drove up to Anderson Pins in Appleton. And I bought the Betsy from Brian and Lisa, which is the colonial flag. And so after that, I came home and I was looking on the Farney's uh, website. They're out of D.C. and they're the ones that usually have the Americana ones for obvious reasons. And then I sort of started collecting them. So I didn't even collect Retro 50 until the middle of last year. And I now counting the two of these that I'm going to add to my collection have nine. Um, Bill has one that is a 
tribute to the P-51 Mustang uh, from World War II. Um, and then I was, I don't know, sometimes um, Retro 51 will take uh, user suggestions for pins that, that people would like to see made. And I guess it was back last summer, I had um, emailed Retro 51 and said, hey, is there any chance you could do a first responder series? Because I was thinking like EMTs, police, and firefighters. So I thought that would be really cool, and I thought that Bill would really enjoy having a firefighter pin. And they texted me, or emailed me back, rather, and said, well, we can't tell you what we've got in the works, but suffice it to say, you'll enjoy what, what we're coming up with. And then last fall, they came out with the Engine 31, which is a tribute to firefighters. So I gave that to Bill for Christmas. He's got the P-51 Mustang. He's going to have the Apollo. Um, so he's getting a small collection of rollerballs. Um, and like I said, I never meant to start collecting Retro 51s, but they write beautifully, and they're a conversation piece, you know. Um, they have all kinds of pens. They have some that are related to the Smithsonian. I've got the um, Amelia Earhart uh, Lockheed Vega one that's the tribute to Amelia Earhart um, that looks like a plane, the one that she flew solo across the Atlantic. Um, and, you know, they have some that are just fun. They have one that makes me think of McKenna, who is one of my cross-stitch uh, floss tube friends. She loves all things macabre and medical related and skeletons and stuff. And they have one called Dr. Gray that looks like it's got a picture of um, a skeleton out of the Gray's Anatomy textbook on it and it glows in the dark. They have some solid colored pins. Um, they have one that they sold that had dogs on it to raise money for the Humane Society. One that had cats on it to raise money for the Humane Society. So there's a lot of fun different Retro 51s that are out there. Um, so really, if you just, if you like using rollerball pens, um, and you like kitschy stuff that gets you noticed, because not everyone's going to have one of these kind of pens, um, then I would say Retro 51's definitely are for you. There's something for everybody, and they're constantly coming out with new pens. Um, they had, I think it was, I can't remember what the name of the collection was, but it was based on absinthe, bourbon, and some other cocktail spirit type thing and they've had ones come out that look like cigars for cigar aficionados i mean you name it they're out there so i hope you enjoyed this unboxing and i hope that if you feel so inclined to do so you'll be able to get your own um space race pen like i said i don't think you can necessarily get the box set anymore but you can buy the pins individually and i think there's plenty of the individual pins out there um so until next time, I wish you happy writing and much creativity, and I will talk to you soon.